in some sense you could say that Mystica was a lifetime in the making. I, I first became aware of the presence of God when I was about seven years old. We lived in Alaska. And much like this forest here, where there's nobody around but me, I walked out into the forest and discovered a stillness within me that I had not recalled in the previous seven years of my life. It's as if that that stillness overcame the personality or ego that I thought I was. What I thought of myself as Billy suddenly disappeared into this this realm of, of oneness with nature, with the universe, with God, with all these things. And of course at seven years old I was not a theologian or a philosopher and I didn't really know the concepts or ideas um, that, we, that we speak of to convey these feelings. But what I did know was that as I was walking down this path further and further away from the little village where we lived. And as the sounds and the, and the life of the village became dimmer and dimmer, and the silence just opened up within me as if the silence had already been there, but my focus had always been on everything except for the silence. And this presence of God is not so much something that, that we learn like book knowledge or how we might study this, this cave, this structure through geology or how we might study the plants of a forest where we have a brain, a mind, that something gets put into it and when something such as this kind of knowledge gets put into it and we put our awareness on that, we say, I know. I know that this type of rock is uh, granite or such and such. Or we may say this type of tree is an oak or a maple or a pine tree because we shed that light of awareness onto this knowledge that has been given to us from outside of us. And even though the beginning of knowledge for us in God can come through book knowledge, for some people, such as myself, that knowledge came through experience. Experience without the ability to put a label or a title on it or to even share that experience with someone else without the appropriate words. This type of knowledge is when our awareness is on the mind and the mind becomes empty. So when the mind becomes empty and there's nothing in the mind to focus on, it's as if the mind disappears and what is left is the totality of everything, or we could call it the presence of God. Well, the presence of God is always here, but when our attention is focused on something in the mind, we simply are not aware of it. Having had this experience at an early age, it was both profound, but also a bit anxiety-ridden, because it seems as if from that moment on, there became a bit of a tug of war between my ego and my heart space the space that was always fully aware of this presence of God, even though at that time I had no words for it. But the energy and the flow of this heart space that always felt perfect and whole and complete seemed to be at odds sometimes with what my mind was focused on or wanted. I discovered firsthand the root of what we call suffering, 
But as time moved on, I allowed that energy and that experience, that presence of God to sort of dwindle away from my focus of life. Just like most people, I turned my attention to making money and becoming something in this world. Of course, I fell into many traps along the way, such as addiction, anxiety, depression, feelings of being incomplete or not enough. I had body image issues. I had issues with my sexuality. And even though I would occasionally attend church somewhere, there was something about religion that actually felt wrong to me. It actually felt like it played more into the ego side of who I was than it did this presence of God. Although I clearly remember catching glimpses of seeing this connection between the words I would read out of the Bible and that presence of God that I experienced so long ago. Eventually, I abandoned Christianity and turned my focus to Buddhism, where I began to meditate. What I was finding in my meditation was this doorway into this presence of God. But something was missing. It didn't quite feel how it naturally felt when I was seven years old walking in the woods of Alaska. After sitting this way for a certain length of time, I would have leg and back issues. So then I turned to yoga. Now, of course, like most people, I thought yoga was just about physical postures. But the more that I studied yoga, the more I realized yoga was getting back to who you really are, which is living your life through this presence of God, not the ego. This is when I really began to understand the teachings of Jesus, not as a moral dictator, but as a teacher who can guide us front and center into this presence of God in its purest form. And not only that, but that type of journey pulls us out of this false suffering that we often deal with from day to day. You know, the idea that we're supposed to be something that we're not, and we're supposed to please everybody around us. And we're supposed to look like this, talk like this, earn this type of money, marry this type of partner, on and on and on. Then when one of these many elements doesn't work out, we suffer. When you look at it from that perspective, and you understand the teachings of Jesus, you really understand that Jesus was more than just a teacher. He was a savior because his way, his path, his life, his light guides the way back to the presence of God out of ego and suffering. Not only did I reach this mental conclusion, but I found myself finally, after all these years, back in the lap of the presence of God. And it felt so good, so complete, so amazing that when people would ask me how I'm doing, I often told them I'm just floating through time and space because that's what it feels like. Everything is perfect in each and every moment. And even though things may not work out how my mind would want them to work out, that joy and that inner peace continues to be there. So instead of focusing on what the mind or ego wants or doesn't want, the focus stays on the presence of God. And ultimately, that's what meditation is. It's the practice of being in the presence of God. All of this had come full circle. And not only was I using the powerful effects of yoga and meditation, but I was plugging that framework directly into the teachings of Jesus. It almost seemed like for me it was meant to be. This is how my life's practice and purpose became Mystica. Not only is Mystica this online faith-based yoga studio, but all of the practices I've learned that bring you back into the presence of God, I share with you through yoga, meditation, spiritual talks, and these programs that I feel have been given to me to share with the world. In the process, I also wrote a book called Mystica, 12 Steps to Love, Happiness, and Spiritual Awakening through faith-based yoga and meditation. Ultimately, Mystica is a practice. It's a journey. It's a journey to get back to who you really are. And that is a child of God 
living through the presence of God. And in that, you open yourself up to living your greatest life. Once you have even just a momentary experience of this power of God within you, and you fully understand what it is, you don't really want anything else. However, it doesn't mean that everybody in this experience becomes a monk or a nun. How it unfolds and manifests in you will be different than anyone else. And that is the most important part about Mystica. This is not just some structure or framework that you're supposed to align with and then put a name tag on that says, I'm this. Ultimately, I am bringing these ancient traditions to the modern day era, including how neuroscience is beginning to prove that the practice of yoga and meditation can completely transform your mind and body. This is basically what I've been teaching for the past 10 years, but now I've honed it all in in an easy to follow, easy to practice program that can work for anyone, whether you have anxiety or depression, or even substance abuse, addiction, or whether you feel like you're already on a really good path, but you wanna see just how deep this presence of God can go. My name is Billy and welcome to Mystica.